around I said Welcome to the local show People you work with People you know Welcome to another edition of the local show here on Grassroots Community Network. We want to also welcome our Facebook Live audience and our YouTube audience. Thanks for joining us here each week here on the local show where we feature inspirational locals and today inspirational dog maybe. <laughs> but I've got our young race dog in the house. And I want to welcome Keegan Swerble to the local you? show. Thanks Keegan, welcome me. to the show. Thank buddy. you. It'll be fun. Thanks for being here. Oh, yes. Luna's going to give you a, yeah, a, a yeah, local show excited. welcome. I'm Unconditionally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're a dog guy, right? Oh, you guys massive. have a dog in your family? Yeah, I love, love dogs. What's your dog's name again? Yucca. Yucca. Black Lab. Okay. 14 years old now. Okay. She's hurting, but... Okay. Because we had your yeah. sister Haley on three yeah, weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. We talked yeah. briefly about your doggy. And oh, yeah. It's kind of also. a sad story now, honestly. <laughs> but she falls down the stairs uh, and, <laughs> it's getting into the old lady yeah. oh, dog definitely. time majorly, majorly. Oh, that's tough at the end but they're also yeah. so sweet at the end yeah, yeah, yeah they are so we got to kind of love them every day oh, yeah. like they love oh, us yeah. right yeah. so thanks for being on the show today no man. worries yeah i'm happy to be here the local show oh yeah that's, i've so. seen this show broadcast and i've always wondered how how to get on there so <laughs> We'll Just keep inspiring, yeah. man. Keep inspiring. <laughs> keep on working. It's great to share your uh, sister Haley with her audience three weeks oh, yeah. ago. Uh, up, upcoming rising star in the mm. U.S. ski team, Nordic team. Yeah. And you've been uh, racing pro bike racing for how many years now? This is my fifth, fifth on the road. Fifth year already. Yeah. As a pro I bike know. racer. God, it's... We're gonna backtrack like we did with your sister to the yeah. early days of growing up in the valley. And some of the what were some of those influences, like athletic influences, that really <laughs> kind of inspired like people? you? people. Kind of the people or the experiences yeah, along probably, the way? Yeah, probably, I mean, well, before I was in cross-country skiing, too, but before that I used to do, like, parkour was my big thing, you know, jumping off of the roofs and all that stuff. Sure, and sure. I did the freestyle skiing. How'd and, you get into parkour? Like how? Well, I we were big on the trampoline. We had a big trampoline okay. at our house, and we'd do all the flips and all that, so okay. I always kind of dreamed, like, how cool it would be to just be able to do the flips on the ground without the trampoline. And so that's kind of what started it. So <laughs> Take that it was, to the streets. Yeah, exactly, thing. exactly. I so like I did it. that for years and okay. had freestyle. And then we kind of got into the Nordic and, you know, like Noah Hoffman and Simi, those guys were, were our big inspirations back then. Right, because so. those guys were coming up through yeah, the ranks. Yeah, they were like, what? Even Noah, on the U.S. ski team probably at that point. I think point. Noah was like maybe just on the U.S. team. Okay, yeah. okay. And Simi had already been up there, so... So then you were uh, doing some Nordic ski racing for a while yeah. through high school? Yeah, through high school. Okay, and how did yeah. that go for you? I I won nationals my last year. Okay. I, my, well, that's the last well, Nordic race I did. I My goal was to win the nationals, and I won the junior nationals, and I never did a race again. Next year I went to cycling full-time. So there was no thoughts? Was there a temptation to go into Nordic ski racing and just keep progressing that, or not really? I, there was a little bit because you get the the – free school that's kind of the big thing but oh okay yeah I, I, I didn't honestly i'm not a winter i'm too like skinny and i, I don't like <laughs> i don't like winter to be honest at all so <laughs> i was just yeah i wanted to win that one race and i did so okay yeah, yeah see i have to bulk up for winter like this oh, is the time you're like a bear yeah or like grabbing cookies, yeah. not thirty thousand calories a day like a bear <laughs> yeah. but maybe you know five or six i know what you mean yeah, yeah i'm yeah, trying yeah. to put a little warm flare oh, on yeah. for winter right oh it definitely counts especially you skiing all the time and all that stuff yeah hiking up into the bowl yeah. where it could be a little cool <sighs> so a little extra winter weight is oh, okay yeah. oh yeah that's yeah. cool yeah so um, went into pro bike racing, and how did that kind of start? Were you on a development team with Hinkley? Yeah, with uh, Axel Merckx. He, Axel Merckx. So I kind of had the whole Lance story, which, like, I, I raced Lance when he was just blowing up with the whole doping scandal. And oh, yeah. I raced him, like, that weekend here in Aspen at the Power 4, and I was 16 at the time, and I, I ended up beating him, and it was all this media cloud and all this stuff. And at that time, he was, Lance was, like, affiliated with, Axel Merckx's team, it was called Livestrong okay. back then. So he was like, Yeah, hey, you want to race on the road? And I was like, Sure. <laughs> yeah, so they. So that uh, was a great ticket there. I'd, I'd never done a road race in my whole life besides the little Aspen Cycling Club ones, and they gave me a chance. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So yeah. how long were you on that development team? Two years on that team. Two years. Yeah. And then you'd move on to. 
Like, I went to a team over in Europe called BMC development team, but then sure. I had a knee injury and I couldn't race that year. And then I was back on Jelly Belly for two years. And then this year I was on Floyd's Pro Cycling. Okay, on Floyd's so, Pro Cycling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's a perfect time to take a quick break. Yeah. Rehydrate. Yeah, yeah. Get ready for some like verbal intervals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe some endurance talking. Yeah, yeah. We'll see yeah, what yeah, we can lot. do together, Keith. <laughs> we get a lot of potential to endurance oh, yeah. athletes. Yeah, right. So we're gonna take a quick break. I do want to thank my summer underwriters for making these great inspirational shows happen each week, June through September. Aspen Square, Klug Properties, the Independence Pass Foundation. Pick and County Landfill, and of course, Sundog Athletics, my business. We'll go to a quick break. Our only one of the show, guys, we'll be back with professional cyclist Keegan Swerble. He's been on the podium a bunch of times this season. He's a young rising star, so don't go away. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Celebrating another great summer season, Aspen Square Hotel is the hospitality place featuring fireplace studio suites and larger condominiums with full hotel style services in the center of downtown Aspen. Aspen Square is proud to support The Locals Show. Curbside recycling is now included with your trash service in Pitkin County. You can reduce your waste footprint and shrink your trash bill by recycling right. Learn more at landfillrules.com. The Independence Pass Foundation, for 30 years restoring and protecting the ecological, historical, and aesthetic integrity of Independence Pass. To learn more, independencepass.org. Sundog Athletics, Aspen's Adventure Sports School, is your opportunity to experience the most beautiful adventure locations and gain new skills to be safer, perform better, and have more fun. Fresh updates on mountain and road biking, hiking, canoeing, snowshoeing, and fat biking adventures at sundogathletics.com, Sundog Athletics on Facebook and Instagram. Welcome to Thanks for sticking with us here on The Local Show featuring inspirational locals here from the Roaring Fork Valley each week. And I'm joined by professional <laughs> cyclist Keegan Swerble, who grew up here in the Valley. And Keegan, we were talking a little bit about your background, growing yeah. up in the Valley, some of your early racing days, oh, yeah. you know, uh, and into pro cycling. And early on in the season, you finished in an eight-day stage race, Tour of Langkawi, yeah. which is the biggest race in Asia, isn't it? It's a big one. Yeah, it's a big one. Big one. It finished second overall. Yeah. Or we call it general classification yeah. or yeah. GC. Yeah. Uh, congratulations. Yeah, thanks. I mean, that, was... that must have been, can you tell us a little bit about the kind of the highlights of that? Yeah, experience? so they had, most of the race was pretty flat stages, but there was this one really cool climb up to this place called Genting Highlands. And it's basically like this gigantic, like commercialized mall on the top of this humongous mountain. <laughs> and the road just like it's crazy like all these it's wild it's hard to explain you have to show some pictures maybe but interesting really really cool road and great fans and yeah that was like gc day so i got third on that day and so that, yeah well and that seems to be you're a great climber yeah. so you tend to strategically plan your big days around these climbs definitely and then you can move up say you get top three mm. get a top result and then you move up in the overall yeah just like you did a tour of utah recently yeah yep. so yep. that's a that's kind of your general you're definitely. a general classification guy yeah yeah which climbs, means you're stuff. selected by your team to be an overall top yeah. finisher yeah can you tell people a little bit of like who aren't familiar with bike racing yeah. kind of how that works because it's like I compare. I like to compare it to football. Yeah. There's like your quarterback. Yeah. Then you have your guys like around your quarterback. Yeah. Um, can you give people? A little it's bit actually of it's pretty similar to that. Like there's there's a, so like you said they they pick one rider and I would be in that if I'm the GC rider I'd be the quarterback equivalent, and so the whole team kind of rallies around you and and, 
it gets you food and protects you because drafting and cycling is a really big factor. So they'll yeah. they'll keep you out of the wind and try and conserve your energy and yeah, food bottles move you up before the climb and yeah, they they really it's it's you couldn't do it without a great team and backing you 100 percent so it's it's a really cool sport in that way it's pretty neat so yeah. you have these teammates around you some guys are bigger that you oh, yeah. get behind in the flats yeah you know to draft off like you say you could save almost a third of your energy oh, definitely. depending on where you are in the definitely. race then you're climbing teammates yeah um, who might be your guys like when you start getting into the climbs that are you're sitting behind those guys right and then you finally come to a point where you got to make a move yeah typically right yeah you're yeah waiting it's... for your time yeah, yeah, on the climbs, it's not mu as much of a team dynamic because it's, it's all, you know, that when, there's no drafting right, on the climb. So, but, yeah, totally. Not as much benefit where Eventually, you're going slow in a climb. It's, like it's, the pressure's on you at that point. You know, the team's worked all day and all, all race for you, so you got to deliver. And Tour of Utah happened. What were the dates on the Tour of Utah? It's like it's mid August? started the 12th of August and okay. 19th or 18th. Okay, seven we've, days. We've got yeah. a clip of that. Um, yeah. And again, that's a six-day or seven-day? Seven. Seven-day Seven. Seven day stage mm -hmm. race, and you're kind of biding your time, getting decent results through the week, and then yeah. you're kind of aiming for this stage six Yeah. with this Empire Pass yeah. climb. Yeah, yeah, Can you tell people a little bit about Empire? Oh, and crazy climb. It's steep, isn't it? Very steep, yeah. It's it's beautiful road, just kind of, again, switch backing up. It, it's pretty wild. It's, it's kind of unlike any climb that we have around here for sure in the steepness and is super it steep part on dirt is there dirt at all or it's, it's all paved? no it's, it's all paved yeah. okay really nice pavement some gnarly road a little or it's pretty it good, used good to surface. be it used to be but i think they actually repaved it in the last like two years maybe okay. so yeah it's, it's beautiful if you're any of you cyclists out there definitely go and try that climb. so you go up and over empire and then yeah. you drop down into park city yeah so that'd be just a great adventure. Yeah, one of the fastest, probably the fastest speed I've ever hit on a bike is coming down this straight, just pant, like dead straight road, and you're just like, it's scary, man. <laughs> yeah, and in, in a pro bike hour. race, you're going even faster, yeah. right? As, oh, yeah. As fast as you could possibly Open roads, go. like you just, yeah, Incredible. no cars, just flying. Well, we've got a clip, and you're on the Empire Climb at this yeah. point. Um, yeah. So let's, uh, let's check out the clip, and then we'll uh, talk a little bit after cool. that. So Swerble going across the gap. He let Piccoli do all the work and now he's trying to go across himself. Swerble leaving, Piccoli hung out to dry. Just as James Piccoli is about to regain contact with the front group, Joe Dombrowski, who started this move, hits it again for EF Education first. Dombrowski on a great day and now he's gapped off Swerble and Hermans. Joe Dombrowski breaks his wind drought. It was 2015, the last time he crossed the line with his hands in the air, right here at Tour of Utah. And it will come full circle in 2019. Joe Dombrowski wins stage six at Park City, the final day of Tour of Utah. Wow, what an incredible ride by Joe Dombrowski, and he works for it, setting the pace the entire time up Empire Pass. And an amazing ride by Joe Dombrowski on the final day, jumping from fifth place all the way up to third place. As we see our stage results once again. Almeida picks up a second place today as Keegan Swerble will be on the podium in third, finishing in that group 26 seconds on Joe Dombrowski. Then the battle between Hermans. And okay, so we're back, Keegan. We just saw that great clip of you basically just bridging up to the leaders yeah. and uh you know they talk about the tactics so you kind of sat on a guy saved your energy a little mm -hmm. bit a uh, pickly yeah wasn't it? Canadian. and then you took off caught those other guys and then there was some dynamic towards the end of that race. yeah dombrowski's descending off empire you guys are coming after him I'm trying to yeah. that kind of end up there because we didn't really see the sprints with you guys yeah so dombrowski at the guy that won he attacked like with maybe a k left on time and we just didn't have the legs, and he kind of got a little bit of a gap. And then it, it, when when you're a group of guys, it's kind of like a lack of commitment sometimes because no one wants right. to pull the other rider to the victory. So we didn't really work together okay. very cohesively. And about. then, yeah. yeah, Dombrowski got a further gap, and the, the win was out by that point. And then we just sprinted between three or four of us.
And did you get third in the sprint? Third, yeah. Okay. Or I got uh, I got second in the sprint. So second third. in the sprint, and you beat Ben Herman's, right? I did, yeah. The guy who won the overall yeah. in the yellow jersey. Yeah, so yeah. I really, I really, been, I really sprinted him. Like, oh, definitely. And I think that annoyed him probably. It did because he was not expecting <laughs> me to sprint him. No, not at all. He's he like, literally no, looked over at me and like was like like into Mount Evans, which you actually won yeah. Mount Evans, which yeah. is has served as the national hill climb championships in yeah. the past. And that race was in July, yeah. before the Tour of You Utah. do that one, don't you? You I, have I've raced past. it a bunch yeah, of yeah, times yeah, in the yeah. past. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and, and low-level amateur, now right. low-level amateur right. old guy, <laughs> <laughs> like Masters. Oh, it's but it's good. an amazing race. It's yeah. the highest race, I think, in the world. It's got to be. To gotta go gotta up be. over 14,000 feet. Crazy. It's there. the highest paved road in North America yeah. to yeah. the top of Mount Evans. You need to tell us a little bit about that dynamic because you were with yeah, some guys again. Yeah, I was actually with my end. my teammate. Him and I kind of got a gap on the other riders, so we were kind of working together quite well. Was it it's, Sergey? Yeah, Sergey Tvetkov. He's a Romanian guy, and okay, we have some images of that. Are you yeah. and you T- Tetkov? Tvetkov. Tvetkov. Yeah. You say the V. <laughs> T V at yeah Tvetkov. And yeah. you guys are working together, yeah. kind of up the last climbs on yeah. Mount Evans. Yeah. And then um, how did that play out at the end of the race then? We just sprinted and I okay. yeah, I got him by a little bit. Okay. It's pretty wild up there though. <laughs> That's a good payday I can't on the time yeah, clock. It sure is, man. <laughs> For two hours of suffering, it's not bad. So bike racing is, is it is suffering. And that's, yeah. that's probably some of the challenges managing the pain, especially mm-hmm. at the toughest part of the race and yeah. or the toughest part of your training. And um, what are what, what else are the most challenging aspects of bike racing? I mean, I would think that there's a lot of sacrifice, especially for a young guy. Yeah. Can you speak to that a little bit? And oh, some yeah. of the sacrifices of Majorly. Bike I mean, like, I sacrificed my, my, I haven't gone to school yet, you know, like, I've given up a full ride to try and pursue this dream, and now it's kind of like, it's hard to make the jump from the level I am to the level of CJ Van Garderen or whatever because you just get overlooked when you're out of the U23 level. Okay. And and now I'm kind of like, geez, like, I wish I would have gone to school maybe. And, you know, like it's dangerous. And at this level you don't make much money. And, yeah, you sacrifice a lot. Yeah, but you're getting results, you know, and that, yeah. must, that must get you noticed, and that must give you more confidence. I thought confidence. so. I, at this point, I don't really, I, I really thought after Tour Utah that I was going to be able to find a, a way to go to a higher level next year, but as of now, I, I haven't had anything. Okay. But it's kind of frustrating, because so I, I do think I could, could definitely ride at that level, but. Right, right. Yeah. So, I mean, beyond improving your training, improving your results, mm-hmm. I mean, is that that's really where it's at, right? And then yeah, you get noticed through your performance. It's actually what I've come to find is these world tour teams, like the teams that do the Tour de France and whatnot, they they don't really care about anything outside of Europe. Okay. So like if you do if you smash the US scene, they don't care. Or yeah. and he's he's been fifth at the Tour de France twice. Mm. Obviously one tour of California. Yeah. I mean he has done well in Europe and here in the States. Yeah, yeah. Has he guided you or given you any like mentoring? Uh I've I've written with him a few times, but it's kind of I, I don't know him that well to be honest. But okay. if I if I were able to ride with him, I'm sure he would help me out. But it, yeah. it's yeah, it's it's a lot of politics trying to get to the next level as well. So right. there's not much he can do probably, but and your schedules are probably as yeah, yeah, and he's not, that's the other around thing. Each other a whole exactly, lot he's not over here too often. Okay, yeah. Well, we talk about like the challenges, the sacrifices, but like, what's the reward? Like, why are you in it? What's yeah? The, what's the best part of bike racing? Well, I I just love preparing for the races. Honestly, I love just that like grind of training and eating well and trying to get skinnier than I am like I <laughs> believe it or not like strength to weight ratio yeah exactly I, I just that. I really like that whole sports science side of it and trying to just like kind of make a machine as best I can out of my body and just go into the race and see what you can do it's, I think it'll be the terminator exactly yeah, so I wish maybe some <laughs> not yet not yet what but. about that feeling like on the podium itself that's for sure that's cool yeah that's gotta be yeah. incredible right? yeah yeah Definitely. I just know from just my racing history again, not anything close to your. Oh level, yeah, but yeah, yeah. When you're up there and those yeah. arms are in the air, that's glory. yeah. It's all it's all worth it then, you know. That's a glorious feeling. So is your season pretty much wrapped up, or what's yet to come? Unfortunately, it is. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay. Then what's like a typical? Let's actually backtrack. What's a typical day during the season? 
what's a typical day like now in off season? Mm. Like for a pro bike racer? Yeah, I mean, I'm still trying to ride quite a bit right now because I, I just can't like hang up my wheels for three months, you know. But, <laughs> so I'm, I'm basically doing the same thing as I do in the regular time of the season and just okay. go out and ride three, four, five hours and try and eat pretty well and do a nap in the day and, you know, go to bed quite early and it's it's kind of a mundane life to some people, but I love it. Like I mean, yeah, I, I love doing that. And what about so. the sights that you see? Yeah, you know that you're out there. Mm. To me, that's like this connection with nature. Oh yeah, and you get the connection with nature around the world. Yeah, you get to see a lot of cool places for free. You know, that must be a big. That's a huge part of the thing sport. that I definitely will be. Yeah, grateful for when I am done, wherever I get in the sport. What would be like a, just something that would come to mind right away? The most spectacular, like natural thing you've seen, like during a bike race. Like I don't know what that would be—a mountain, a waterfall, um, a crowd. It could or... be some. Yeah, yeah, I mean the crowds are really wild. It could be something that was in Langkawi, like this giant, like Buddhist, like temple. It, I don't know what it was. If it was even real, some religious, but some crazy huge monument. shrine that we saw on the side of the road, and it, yeah, it was wild. Really what cool. about fan experiences? Have you had any crazy fan experiences? Probably over in Langkawi as well, yeah. I mean, just like okay. your classic Tour de France, just fans all over the road and screaming. and Yeah, right. that's that's. What cool. does that do for you? Does that get oh, you excited? Just, yeah, it gets you super, like... Super pumped. Way, you'll go way over your power and you'll be like, oh, crap, like I'm... You know, get, just massive okay. adrenaline rush. Massive adrenaline rush. So, Keegan, in the next, say, five years, if you could have, like, your... Your perfect story, your perfect dream comes true. Yeah. What, is, what does that look like, say, five years from now? Five years from now, hopefully be on the level of TJ Van Garderen, just since he's a local, you know. But, yeah, yeah ride in the world tour. I want to I wanna do all the big races and hopefully make some money doing this sport finally. And Would you wear pink like PJ? I would love to TJ be on that I mean. team. Yeah, I would love to be on that team for sure. That's that's a great team. That's education yeah. first. Yeah, yeah. First. yeah, I mean that's... You got, you got the pink yeah, thing going I can do already. the bright colors quite well. So, <laughs> yeah, sign me up, the F, drive back, or whatever that team is. All right, so one, just super quick here at the end. And, we, you know, bike racing's been kind of overshadowed by doping and yeah. these, these kind of issues and scandals over the years. Yeah. But just real briefly, what's the state of the union in terms of doping? <laughs> yeah, I, right I mean, I honestly haven't dealt with any of that stuff. Just or don't any, really see it. Don't, yeah. I, I really do think it is significantly significant there's always going to be people that cheat in any yeah. sport and any you know be it school be it cycling or any sport but it's definitely cleaner you see these young 20 year old riders who are killing it on the world tour their first year so I'm, i highly doubt that those people are on drugs right. so it's definitely right. taking a step forward right that's what it seems like to me and that's what tj has also said yeah you know and people yeah. inside racing and it's yeah come a long way and you've come a long way man so yeah. congratulations <laughs> hey, on all your friend. results yeah thank really you. proud of you hopefully keep some more coming you keep them coming hey man here's some fuel for your oh, next yeah. training ride oh, organic yeah. chocolate weird. chip cookies we're talking at least thank you oh. <laughs> and a psychedelic reusable from Pink yeah Pink awesome Lampo. yeah i love it huh yeah did you have fun in the show today i did yeah it was a good time good Keegan time swervel so proud of you man Thanks, racing man. for floyd's pro Floyd, cycling pro yeah. for now yeah eighth at tour of utah second tour of langkawi yeah Keep up the great work. Hey, thanks, man. Win at Mount Evans. That's huge, yeah. too. <laughs> that was thanks, a good one. Thanks to Keegan Swerble, and thank you guys for watching The Local Show. Thanks, guys. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Curbside recycling is now included with your trash service in Pitkin County. You can reduce your waste footprint and shrink your trash bill by recycling right. Learn more at landfillrules.com. The Independence Pass Foundation, for 30 years restoring and protecting the ecological, historical, and aesthetic integrity of Independence Pass. To learn more, independencepass.org. Sundog Athletics, Aspen's Adventure Sports School, is your opportunity to experience the most beautiful adventure locations and gain new skills to be safer, perform better, and have more fun. Fresh updates on mountain and road biking, hiking, canoeing, snowshoeing, and fat biking adventures, 
at sundogathletics.com, Sundog Athletics on Facebook and Instagram. Welcome to